Welcome to Panda Head Studios. Now that you're here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below to join the Panda Force. And today we are going to be talking about Dragon Ghost House Hunting Episode 1, which in my opinion ultimately was meh. Not going to argue with that fact. Uh, uh, but the show is about a dragon who gets kicked out of his, like, dragon, uh, the roofs with all the other dragons because he missed, because a dragon that he was guarding gets stolen. And then he just, he has to go find home. And he, which title of the show. And first place he goes is some doors. They try and kill him and use him for parts. Then he ends up with some uh, harpies, which he can't fly, so he can't live with them. Then they send him some goblins. Goblins want to eat him. But then eventually they figure out a reason not to eat. He convinces them not to eat him. Then he ends up meeting a random water person who's like, you can live with me, and then... Uh, sanguine. Sanguine, yes. He, uh, <laughs> he offers, oh, you can live with me, but then he forgets he can't swim. And <laughs> then he, uh, is, like, he gets sent to this magical elf guy who you see in the very beginning of the show. But it's nothing to do with the dragon that's introducing him, but you don't see his face. And he's, then he... Not at the beginning of the show, you do see it at the end. Yes. And he, uh, some heroes go attack the dragon, and they're turned out to not actually be heroes. Well, the hero is a title, not, like, something you do as an action. And, and then the architect saves him, and then the episode ends. Yeah. It's really... It's, <laughs> it's a bad episode, in my opinion, ultimately. Like... They, they try to do a couple of jokes that, in my opinion, the, almost all of them do not land. Like, one of his first jokes in the episode is him talking about the fact that, like, after he lost the dragon egg is, oh, once we go to a new map, it'll just respawn. Like, it's a video game. And the father going, this isn't a video game. Uh, then when he's with the dwarves, he... Mm, to escape, he t like they open the cage because they're gonna start taking him apart, and he's like, "Oh, someone's stealing your gold!" And of course, every dwarf surrounding him looks away so he can run away. Then he gets chased, and when he's with the harpies, they tell him to fly and flap his wings, and he jumps off this cliff. And you're like, and it, it has that moment where it zooms in, and it looks like he's gonna fly, and then he just prat falls to the ground poorly. It's not even a funny pratfall. He just slams into the ground. It's just, and the goblin through all the dramatic music and all all like the they fill the troll like it should be perfect. It, it should, should be, be funny, but it's not. Like most of these jokes are all and and with the goblins, the way he gets out of that is he tells them that oh the harpy sent me here and they send their regards and the goblins get horny on main for the fact that the harpy sent him and they're like, they're immediately like oh we we'll let you down then, but you can't stay with us. And then, the I mean, nothing funny happens with the Sanguine other than the fact that he forgets that he can't swim, which, how do you forget that you cannot swim? And I don't get that even part. Even if you, let, you, you escape the world of logic and you just think about it, that's a bad joke. It's a bad, yeah. When it should be a good, like, all these jokes consistently should be a good joke. And they're not. And I, I think the biggest problem about all of these jokes is the fact that it, it's his attitude for everything is... Every failure, all he does is cry and whine. He gets, you know, he cries when he gets kicked out. He cries when he gets captured. He cries when he fails uh, to fly. He cries when he can't stay with the goblins. Like, just everything results in him crying, and it's not funny. And I, I get it. He's he's supposed to be, like, this weakling character that everything goes poorly for. I, I, I get what they're trying to go for. It's just none of it lands well. The only jokes that remotely landed, and I don't even mean well, I just mean they kind of hit the board, was the joke with the heroes at the end of the show, because they, they announce themselves as heroes. He thinks, oh, heroes, in a, a, traditional, fantasy uh, a traditional fantasy sense. They're more like a DD and d party. They're exactly a D&D &D party. <laughs> uh, where you Which call is why they're fun. Yeah. It, I've ran D&D &D parties that call themselves heroes and they're just murder hobos, which is exactly what these heroes are. Because <laughs> they they talk about the fact that they're going to slay him because it'll bring them glory. And he's like, wait, you're not heroes, you're just greedy. And it's like, yeah, because it turns out the hero title isn't a title people bestow on them, but is in fact a class title, much like a video game. 
because they keep making video game references that apparently only the dragon understands. And everyone else keeps, like, ignoring that fact. And then we meet the titular architect slash realtor for, for monster houses. Uh, in, a, in a more, like, we get to see his face and everything. Like, I actually really enjoyed his very beginning bit. That yeah. made the show, like, remotely interesting for three minutes. Which is, that's, he's pretty much the sole reason why, <laughs> even though this episode sucked, we're going to check out the next episode. Yeah, because he shows up, and the way he does is he summons a spell book and says, comments about the fact that the heroes are picking on the weak, and then he calls down a lightning bolt that engulfed the heroes and then engulfed them in flames, and they're just left in, like, bones and, like... Uh, uh, metal and weapons that are like rusted over from the fire and covered in ash and that that was a little funny to me that and that's it would actually like with the cartoonish nature of everything else it would have been funnier if they would have been like cartoon characters who were just ashy. Oh, like ashy and electric yeah uh, yeah, their hair was all burnt, and they're like they're bald, and their clothes are destroyed, their yeah. weapons are ruined, and they run away naked. Oh, like it would have actually been a little funnier. Yeah, that is true. That that would have made it a little bit funnier, especially given the cartoonish nature of everything else in this show. And it's just like I I am going to watch the next episode mostly for the architect. I hope he plays a bigger role through the rest of the season. Because if he plays a more central role, and the dragon just happens to be, like, his motivation for moving forward, okay, I can get, I can watch this show. I'll still be annoyed at everything the dragon does, probably, but at least, at least there's an entertaining character. But if it goes the way this episode has, where it's just prattle after prattle, like, I'm, I can't say this is worth watching at all. Like, I can't even say this first episode is worth watching. Okay. I do want to say, though, watch, like, the first, like, three minutes where the slimes are trying to get their house. Because that's actually a fun scene. If yeah. that had been basically the whole episode, I'd have loved it. Well, that was one of the biggest issues with this show uh, was the lack of tone, or like, consistent tone. Yeah. Sometimes it would be this humorous thing. Other times it would have this very serious nature to it. Like, when his father tells him, when the dragon's father tells him, like, this isn't a video game. Like, it's a very serious moment with levity in it. Very well toned. But then there's the part where he jumps off of the cliff and just falls. And it's all dramatic. It's per It's exactly what it should be. But they, the tone of the show hasn't fit that. No, it's the, the that. tone of the show keeps doing this. Yeah. And, and it's, and it's like... And even, like, the beginning couple of minutes, like, it's a very serious, like, like realty thing. And, and transactional thing. And then the rest of the show is pratfalls and bad jokes. Yeah. So even that doesn't fit. And should And this is just like a personal complaint, but I feel that it's like one of the weakest things. It's one one of the things that really pulls me out of the show is the voice actor uh, of course I'm watching it in Japanese. Um but I'm watching subtitles. I wish I spoke Japanese. <laughs> but the, I can I still hear the ears. <laughs> and the voice actor nothing wrong with him that their performance. It's the whoever chose to cast that specific person who chose that this is going to be the voice of my character. Which I'm yeah. sure that in the manga that it's based off of, you probably want more of a lighthearted uh, voice, but to me it just doesn't fit a dragon. And that's like one of the biggest things that makes me, the, what made me the most excited about the show. Is it not a show about a human? Yeah. It, I mean, it's anthropomorphized, that's fine. But it's like Wally -E is a great movie because it's not about the humans. It's not about the human element, even though there's all sorts of other stuff in it. That's what makes that movie good, when it's really boring and slow-paced. Yeah. <laughs> but it's really interesting because of that fact. And this show should be interesting because of a dragon doesn't know how to fly. That's hilarious. Dragon doesn't know how to swim. Also hilarious. Uh, dragon cannot, doesn't know how to be intimidating and scary. <laughs> also hilarious. But everything misses the mark. And yeah. the voice acting doesn't, to me, fit with that choice. Like, that doesn't, what I would imagine, a, a, even a lighthearted dragon voice. It's kind of like Fry and Futurama. Um, it, it being yeah, the, 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 the tone of it yeah. is, is very similar to him. But yeah, that that's all from us on this episode. Yeah. Uh, hopefully episode two is better. 
Catch you later. Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed that episode. Let us know in the comments down below your thoughts on this episode. And while you're down there, don't forget to hit the like button. And since you're part of the Panda Force, don't forget to hit the bell icon for future orders. If you're interested in joining us gaming, check us out on Twitch. And for updates on the channel, follow us on Twitter. Links are in the description down below.